Today, we'll go ahead and take a look at activity 1.7, Game Time. In this activity, you will use pair programming to develop a game that has some of the most common features in gaming. A hero, villain, a timer, and a score. You will use sprites, which are animated images, to make the hero and villain move about the screen, and variables to track the time left and the score. So what is a variable? A variable is simply a placeholder in a device's memory that stores a value a program is using. Now there are different type of data types that can be used to store such information. These data types can be anything from numbers to strings and Boolean logic. A number is a number, anywhere from zero to infinity. So you can store numbers as a type of data type. Strings, for example, are any type of text that you would use. Boolean logic is whether a condition is either true or false. So even though we have not created any variables in any of our previous activities, we have used them without even realizing it. So for example, let's take a look at our measles button component that we created back in activity 1.3. So for this activity, we have what we call components. And in those components, we can store a value that affects the look or the behavior of a specific component. You can program your code to change these values while the app is running. Therefore, these properties are a form of a variable. For example, the text enabled and height all store values about the measles button. Now that can be changed from within the code, which allows that variable to be adjusted. Now here are three different types of data types that we can use within that measles button. So the first example, we have setting our measles button text to click here for the measles button description. This is an example of using a string to store that information as a variable. The second example, setting our measles button to enable to false would be using the Boolean logic, creating that button to either be enabled, either being true where it would be active or false where it would become inactive. And our third example here is setting that measles button height to 50. That would be an example of using a number as a data type. So now that we know a little bit about variables, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can track a variable within our program. Because variables can change while a program is running, it is important for us as programmers to keep track of those variables when we develop our code. Now, algorithms can initialize and update variables, so programmers use a trace table or a code tracing chart similar to the one below to trace an algorithm step by step. We can then record those values for each variable. So for every step in an algorithm that updates variables, the programmer records the value of each variable in a new row. If a variable has not been yet assigned a value, they keep its cell blank. So here we have an example of an algorithm and its trace table. So for our algorithm, we are setting a variable or calling a variable X and a variable Y. So we have two variables that we'll be looking at here. X is being assigned a number or a value of zero. Y is being assigned a value of 15. For step three, we're taking X and setting X to be X plus two. And then for step four, we're taking our variable of y and setting that to be y plus x. So note that each line of the code above is called an assignment statement. That means we are assigning the variables x and y a value. So the line of code x equals zero assigns the value of zero to x. The line of code x equals x plus two assigns a new value to x, which is equal to the previous value of x plus two. Let's go ahead and take a look and see if we can code trace this algorithm. For this specific algorithm, we have four assignment statements we are gonna be looking at. x equals zero, y equals 15, x equals x plus two, and y equals y plus x. So the next step is to go ahead and figure out what the value is or trace the value of each variable. So for our first step, x equals zero, we are now assigning a value of zero to our x variable. 
So on our assignment statement one, what we would do is place the number zero in the X column. We would leave the Y column blank since no value has been assigned at this time. For our second assignment statement, Y equals 15, what we would then need to do is go ahead and assign a value of 15 to Y. Now here, our X value has not changed. Therefore, the X value is still equal to zero. The Y value has now been assigned a value of 15, so we would place the number 15 in the Y column. For our third assignment statement, we have X equals X plus two. So here we're taking what the current value of X is, which is zero, and adding two to that value. So zero plus two would now equal two. So in the X column, we would then go ahead and add the value of two to that column. Y's value has not changed from the previous assignment statement. Therefore, we would still keep the number 15 in the Y column. Now for our fourth assignment statement, Y equals Y plus X, we know that Y is now equal to 15 and X is now equal to two. X has not changed Therefore, X would still equal two in the X column, and Y will now be assigned a value of 15 plus two, which equals 17. So we would enter the number 17 into the Y column. So there you have how you would complete your code tracing chart. For our first code tracing example, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at our algorithm that has four assignment statements. Step one has an assignment statement of setting our X value to equal five. Step two, we're setting X to equal 12. In step three, we're gonna set X to equal X plus one. And then in step four, we're gonna set our X again to equal one. So if we go ahead and take a look at our first assignment value here, which is X equals five, we need to go ahead and mark down that X equals five in our code tracing chart. Now we have a value of five for X. The second assignment statement is now resetting that X value to equal 12. So in our code tracing chart, we'll go ahead and mark X as now having a value of 12. For the third assignment statement, we're gonna go ahead and take our previous step, which is X is equal to 12, and apply it to find the new value. We do this by setting X to equal whatever X was previously, which was 12, and add one to it. This gives us a new value of X equal 13. For our fourth and final assignment statement, we'll go ahead and reset X to have a value of one. For this example, we're gonna look at using a flowchart to code trace our variable. You'll also notice that our flowchart is using a conditional statement where it asks us, is X less than Y? We will need to follow that condition once we get down to the third assignment statement. For our first assignment statement, we are going to go and set our X variable to have a value of 10. So in our code tracing chart, we can add an X value of having 10, whereas Y will remain blank. At this time, Y has not been assigned a value. The second assignment statement is setting our Y value to have a value of five. Since X has been previously set at 10, it will remain at 10, while Y now becomes five. Now we have our condition. Is X less than Y? Well, currently X has a value of 10 and Y has a value of five. Therefore, X is not less than Y. So we would then follow the no pathway. Here, that brings us to our third assignment statement, which is Y is equal to X times two. Since X has a value of 10 and we multiply that by two, we now get a value of 20. So X now has a value of 10, where Y now has a new value of 20. The fourth assignment statement has us using X is equal to 30. Therefore, the X will now equal 30, 
where the y will now equal 20. For our final example, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at how we can set our weather based on the current temperature. So here you can see that we're gonna be using multiple conditional statements as well as one assignment statement in order to determine the outcome of our variable. So taking a look at the beginning of our flow chart, what we're gonna notice is the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and initialize or set my fall weather variable to equal 65 degrees. So now that we have a value of our variable, we can go ahead and enter that into our code tracing chart. The next step is to determine what the fall weather is going to read, whether it's hot, warm, or mild outside. So now that we have that 65 degree temperature, we can go ahead and take a look at our conditions and see which one is a true statement. So our first condition asks us, is the temperature greater than 80 degrees? Well, at this current time, the temperature is only 65. So the answer to that would be no or false. Therefore, we would move downwards to our next condition. The next condition is asking us, is the temperature greater than 70 degrees? Again, our variable is already set to 65 degrees and 65 is not greater than 70. Therefore, our answer would be no or false for our second condition. At this time, we've already eliminated two of our choices, both hot and warm. Our third condition is asking us, is the temperature greater than 60 degrees? And again, since our variable is 65 degrees at this current time, that becomes a true statement. 65 is greater than 60. So our answer to this conditional statement would be yes. So now we can move over and check what we should change our fall weather variable to by setting it to mild. Now that we have our answer, we can go ahead and answer that and add it to our code tracing chart. And now we have solved our conditional statements as well as our code tracing chart. Our fall weather is set to mild because it has a temperature of 65 degrees.